This was my first time being a Fiverr seller. I did no outside promotion. I am by no means an artist. And everything I sold was generated from text by artificial intelligence. If you clicked on this video because you wanted to see how much money I made, it was $334.48. You can close this video and go watch someone who remembers to sneak in jokes. But if you want to know what it's like to sell digital paintings for five bucks, if you want my thoughts on if it's even ethical to take away clients from real, hard-working artists, and if you think selling a few generations might be a good way to pay for your AI art addiction, I hope you watch this video to the end because you are in for a treat. The thing is, I am painfully aware that this is probably the most controversial video I will ever make on this channel. According to the art world, and probably most rational people, AI-generated art isn't art. It isn't worth money, and everything it makes is just a mashup of images stolen and scraped off the internet that were once created by real artists. Basically, if someone was dumb enough to sell AI-generated art, their customers will hate them and they'll be an evil, scamming plagiarizer. If that same person went online and posted a YouTube video bragging about it, their comment section would be so full of hate, they would never be able to look at it again. Hi, my name is Glibitry, and 100 days ago, I set up a Fiverr account so I could sell AI-generated art. Since then, I've delivered on 25 orders and only ever gotten five-star reviews. I'm taking a big risk just by posting this, and I imagine there are several people writing something nasty in the comment section right now. If that's not you, Go ahead and check to see if you're subscribed, because I would love to have you in my community. <laughs> and don't worry, if you watch this whole video and you're still mad at me, you're totally allowed to write something mean later, even if you're subscribed. That's fine. Hey, I'm mad at me too. But beyond doing what I said in the title of this video, I promise I tried very hard to be as reasonable about this as I possibly could. I want to talk about exactly what I mean by that. But first, there's going to be a bunch of you who aren't very familiar with AI-generated art. What is it? How does it work? And why do people hate it so much? Well, the vast majority of these models from an overhead view are relatively simple. They combine natural language models with image synthesis. First, you describe an image to a computer with a plain text description, the computer starts whirring, and eventually you get an image out of it. Early on, a lot of these models were pretty rudimentary and generated mostly garbage. As they started getting better, they became a wonderful source of memes. And now, the best of them can create photorealistic images of whatever you can think of. The trouble is, for these models to work, they were trained on millions and millions of images scraped from across the internet. That means they took the hard work of thousands of artists, photographers, and graphic designers, the likeness of hundreds of celebrities, and the purest moments of the sweetest of puppies, and pumped them into a computer. The only reason these models know anything about people, or objects, or animals, or composition, or color theory, is because it did some kind of math problem on the collective database of human creativity. So not only is it better at generating different variations of Emma Watson than it is at generating a unique looking blonde lady, it can also bar for bar mimic the style of any artist who was a big enough part of its training data. And if the model can do that, anyone can. It isn't hard to understand why artists are concerned about letting the general public write a living artist's name into some text box and then getting original work in their style in under a minute. Artists spend years studying, practicing, and training to develop a style. If a computer can do that, why would anyone learn to draw again? These models are getting better and more precise at an alarming rate. So more importantly, why would you ever hire an artist again? Computers are faster, computers are cheaper, they're becoming more creative, and billionaires are cheering for this one. They don't expect a living wage. So whenever an AI artist, quick tip, everyone loves that phrase, you should totally use it. Whenever an AI artist takes credit for something the model spits out, that credit should really be going to the original creators of the artworks that model is referencing. That's where I come in. I'm one of those AI artist people. I have no real talent. I basically 
rewrote the requirements of the commission I got into a little text box and I sold them the image that came out. Yeah, you're probably on the side of those mean commenters now, aren't you? Damn it, why did I make this video again? <laughs> no, no. I told you I was being as reasonable as I possibly could about this, and I'm sticking to that. First thing, I told people exactly what they were getting from me. That meant plainly explaining that I use AI generation tools, and beyond that, all I'm doing is remixing and retouching what the AI gives me. I put that fact in the description of both the gigs I made, as well as in my profile. That meant if someone thought AI-generated art shouldn't be a part of the workflow, they would go to someone else. The next big thing I thought about was price. I spent a long time browsing Fiverr gigs, and I noticed something. There were a lot of gigs that started at $5. I think tons of people use that as a search criteria, so gigs starting at $5 just perform better. That meant this was really common. For $5, you'll see a rough sketch with no color and low resolution, and the next step up would be $125 for the actual gig. I would say that working artists that are actually making original images would charge a minimum of 40 bucks for polished line art, and about 100 bucks for a premium full color piece. I didn't think it was right to be competing at that price point. Even if AI-generated art was able to deliver something similar, I had no interest in taking their customers away. Instead, I wanted to be competing with the swaths of people on Fiverr who were dragging and dropping stickers from a whiteboard stock photography site. Fiverr is also full of scammers trying to make a quick buck from people who don't know what art should cost. Buying cheap art on this website is always going to come with some hazards. But my thinking was that by keeping my prices cheap enough, if someone is really on a budget and wants their idea brought to life, AI generation is the best deal they're gonna get. The last piece I needed to decide was what I would actually sell. If you think back to 100 days ago, and you might have been watching my channel, AI art hadn't progressed nearly as far as it has now. I was still using Disco Diffusion on AI Art Studio, and it was bad at most kinds of images. I needed to limit my scope so I wasn't getting commissions for anything the AI couldn't pull off. You may remember, Disco Diffusion had no idea what people or animals looked like. It had trouble with right angles, and only understood the concept of what different kinds of objects were. The one thing it was good at was landscapes and city scenes, so that's what I offered. If you create a Fiverr gig, you need to title it in this I will format. So I called mine, I will create concept art for your landscape or city fast. I offered three tiers. For $5, I made a less detailed draft with a lower resolution. For $10, I offered exactly what was in the gig, detailed concept art at that same resolution. And for $15, I upped the resolution to 1920 by 1080, full wallpaper quality. At these prices, I felt confident that I would only be competing with people like me who weren't truly creating art. I promised a fast delivery and let the gig free into the world. All I had to do was sit back and let the orders come rolling in. For anyone who's going to be following in my footsteps, I do need to warn you. Getting sales on Fiverr is not some instant thing. I published that gig and it took me weeks to even get my first message, let alone order. But what really got my gig going was that first five-star review. I think when you're a seller on Fiverr with no reviews, you look a lot like a scammer, and no one wants to order from someone who is just going to take their money and run. But after some waiting, I did eventually get an order. Between when I published my gig and when that order actually came in, I did get access to Midjourney. So while my gig was still confined to landscapes, I had a new tool that let me branch out and generate art with real detail. I feel like now is a good time to walk you through my workflow. So Midjourney was really useful for most scenes people would ask me to create, but it wasn't perfect. Conceptually, it could handle an idea, and really nailed the style and vibe I was going after, but to actually put the pieces where the client wanted them was beyond what Midjourney was capable of. Like if I needed a walkway or a dock or a specific type of building, working from my prompts, the generator would never put the pieces in the right place. Instead, I would generate between one and four images and remix them in Photoshop. I'd place different pieces from different generations to get exactly what I was looking for. Now, I am not a Photoshop master, and at this point, these images would be rough around the edges, to say the least. That's when I went back to my trusty 
AI Art Studio. Disco Diffusion lets me provide an initial image. Then, when generating, it would keep the form and colors from my mid-journey mashup, TM. But depending on how many steps I give Disco to work from, it can actually stylize and clean up the result. This is ideal, because mid-journey images have a lot of artifacts, and you can almost always tell when you're looking at one. Especially with the older upscalers I was using at the time, Midjourney had a vibe I just didn't love. The thumbnails in my gig were from AI Art Studio, since that's all I had access to when I created it, and this flow let me continue to match that style even though I was using Midjourney. It was a beautiful combination of the coherence of the Midjourney landscape, as well as Midjourney's understanding of aesthetic, while letting the finishing touches from Disco Diffusion clarify the style and clean up my poor Photoshop work. This video is already getting long, and I am not gonna go through each commission one by one. Instead, I am just going to tell you what this all was like for me. On one hand, I will be the first to say the images I sold were nothing spectacular. They were crude mock-ups where all of the flair was AI generated. On the other hand, this project was extremely gratifying. I have been addicted to generating art ever since I was exposed to this nonsense. It eventually got to a point where this challenge meant that most evenings, I was getting paid to do something I would have been doing anyway. These gigs gave me ideas, and it was fun for me to see how the AI would interpret them. I did have to say no to a lot of projects. There are things outside the scope of what an AI can generate well. But overall, everyone I worked with was kind, had fun ideas, and were appreciative that I was doing what I was doing for such a cheap price. It seems like the people who gravitated towards my gig were pretty understanding that cheap art has limitations. They had a budget to stick to and I bet they were thrilled to see that there was someone out there who could bring life and color to their idea without breaking the bank. I really don't think I was taking work away from talented people, but there is a hunger out there for more beauty in the world, and AI-generated art is making that beauty more accessible. In the end, I found myself gaining a new appreciation for art in general. Generating all these images for people, for their websites, games, D&D campaigns, and even an album cover got me engaged in making the best work I possibly could. I found myself trying to learn a lot of the things I earlier said no one would have to learn anymore. My YouTube homepage has been filling up with different artists' ideas on framing and composition and color theory and drawing figures. I have become more engaged with the artistic process than I ever was before this challenge. After 100 days of using an AI to deliver commissions, I have started to truly understand how much of the world's beauty has come from extremely talented people. If you like this video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.